everybody to Psychic Nerd 62, uh, surrounded by all my friends. Tarzan out in outer space, uh, potentially with a gala node. Uh, Wash Shaker <laughs> <laughs> hanging out. Uh, gala node owner. No, I could go on and on about the gala nodes. I'll, I'll shut up and just get going. Uh, Tarzan, Wash Shaker, Human Avatar, Crypto Bloke, Category. I'm a U of M fan. Ever helpful, I'm a U of M fan. Helped out uh, Crypto Spartan with some things today. Han, Barefoot Doc. Hi, Barefoot Doc. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a minute. Uh, David 14, Tech Cowgirl, Phil. Is that a what do you got behind you? 1970 Dodge Super B. Damn. That's cool. Queen Maria. You're looking richer today, Queen. Um, Crypto Spartan. Mary M. Be ever helpful, Mary M. Uh, there's Bliss down there. Samantha Jane James and the Ghost Santino. Wow, we got a full house today. So um, in the green room, we were having a pretty lively discussion uh, about uh, capital markets in the United States and uh, regulatory treatment of uh, crypto. So I'd like to continue those discussions because uh, I wish we would have captured a lot of that. Um, I guess we're also going to get into the strength of the gaming sector and uh, an overall look at the markets, crypto markets, and just anything that else has came through for people this week. Um, so I guess here's where I say, um, if you don't get the whole show, I wish you would. And you can do that by registering uh, up on Patreon for the Psychic Nerds Discord, or I'm sorry, Patreon, which gives you access to the Discord. Lots of people helping and uh, being helpful up there and interacting and sharing information. And if you don't get the full show, I wish you would, uh, but I'd like you to enjoy this sampler anyway. So anyway, that being said, let's talk about these capital markets. So I guess we started off the discussion with uh, continuous. Uh, so there's things we know, and then there's things we that are presented out in public. And out in public, uh, the regulatory environment for crypto is still uh, pretty murky um, and pretty strange. Um, so I'd like to pick up the discussion about the United States its capital markets and what are what is the United States losing? What is the United States losing uh, when it comes to this blockchain game? Uh, we're, we're seeing companies, developers, everything else, just uh, funds uh, started uh, up in other countries and things. But uh, let's let's go ahead and continue the discussion we had. It's gonna be with... hard to, to to keep that going the way we left it because it was almost we almost killed it. Well, so let's so, so let, let's let's just say that if I if I was a resident of Mexico, you know, let's say I, I you know, let's say you know, a couple hundred miles south of here, I am in Mexico. I have full access to any of the crypto markets. I can go on to say FTX.com. I have full access of everything they have act, that they present. I can freely go on to Binance without any issue. I can use one inch without any concern about having to bypass anything in their terms of service which would then potentially cause me to lose all of my crypto yet come north of that i lose massive portions of access i cannot use one inch i have to use ftx us which is a fraction of the full ftx stable i have to use Binance US, which is again, a fraction and then even less at times of Binance. You know, Sam has said forever, and she's right that use the, use the US based exchanges because you know that they're stable, but at the same time, the same engines that run these US based ones, like say for FTX, run the international ones. And I don't like being told that I'm an idiot. And yet that's what the government is doing. And in many, and in many forms, they are harming us. And in a way they are dishonoring their intended operation. I mean, it's bad enough, you know, when you look at the SEC or the CFTC and you can point right back at just how horrible they work and that they work opposite of what their their mandate is. There's not supposed to be any naked short sales, but oh my gosh, there's not supposed to be uh, double sells of stock, but oh my gosh. So and 
instead of us so you, out. you bring this back to crypto and we're we're left with this 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 entire industry that does not want to deal with the u.s because of the sec and the cftc and other security organizations everybody sees what the sec has been doing with with xrp and others and how their enforcement is inconsistent block by oh. oh we'll just pay it we'll just pay a uh, a fine xrp yeah guys we, we we're gonna really tear you up Well, I mean, we could talk about those two individual situations. I, <clears throat> some of us here probably feel like there is a huge, vast difference between they don't they don't seem exactly the same, right? Uh, mm -hmm. so, I think that the government's responding though many times to the people who do want a nanny nation. I mean, how many times do we read headlines about some grown ass person who got themselves hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt? for an unusable degree pretty much or and they've enslaved themselves to that debt because on top of it they've passed in the U.S. Congress and I think it's also law in Canada I know in Canada there's very few cases where you can get out from underneath your student loan debt so you can declare bankruptcy but you're still you still got your student you're still on the hook for your student loan and I understand that's the same in the U.S. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and yeah, how, how many times did we see in the newspaper somebody bawling about that and the poor victim or somebody signs a piece of paper and, oh, I'm the poor victim. Oh, go get them. You know, they never bothered to read anything. It was too good to be true. I mean, it's like those people who um, send money to these, these scammers overseas under the guise of being their lover or their mm -hmm. future lover. I don't know mm -hmm. how many ex- um, FBI, you know, covert spies that are trapped in third world countries with broken legs out there, but there seems to be quite a few. But again, you know, the stupid people out there. And I watched a video recently and it talks about, you know, the reason why the world is shit today is because not because of evil people, it's because of stupid people, you know, who overestimate their capabilities you know, and yeah, sure, we have a lot of people in government who are stupid, but I find in general, the bureaucrats know what they're doing. I mean, I just spent four hours in a government office and everybody there was very nice and helpful and things were moving along and they'll do their job and they were friendly and helpful. It was all good. But at my whole point um, to just sort of play devil's advocate to human avatar is that the government, you know, is not calling us stupid so much as some people in our population have obviously found a large audience of individuals who are not going to call them out for being so dumb as to go $250,000 in debt to get a degree so they could be an administrator making, you know, $55,000 a year. You know, like, wh what were you thinking? You know, did, did, can't you people do math? You know, it's and and they but they found an audience where 30 years ago people would have been appalled at that kind of behavior. What were you, you do like everyone else do, do? You go and get a crap job that you hate and you and you go to school in the evenings and you pay for it that way. You know, you don't go and get this two hundred thousand dollar debt. But then now you got a group of people where it actually, you know, somebody out there obviously feels that there's an audience that feel sorry for that. And then they put it, they put it on the, the news wire. Just, I remember there's been a few stories like that. There's been a whole lot of stories about a whole lot of people who've done a whole lot of stupid things and they're being held out as some kind of victim. So no wonder, you know, we've got the government trying to treat us like a nanny nation. And a lot of us, we don't like that because we're, we're not, we take responsibility for our actions. We've never, laid it at the feet of other people the foot of other another person our yeah. own folly you know and that's the difference so well, see, I can... so the way i Go look ahead, at Mark. it is the united states markets are the most regulated most uh, um there's more financial laws in the united states than anywhere else in the world it's why the world feels that this is a safe place to send their money of all sorts shapes and sizes right 
Um, there's no shortage of virtual signaling in the United States and other places around the world, but specifically we're talking about the United States um, <clears throat> around we, we will look out for you, right? Or, or people or investors or people that uh, uh, participate in these markets need to be protected. And because they need to be protected, we need our cut. Well, that sounds more like your, your local mafia boss than anything else to me. Uh, a lot of us would enjoy the self-autonomy. A lot of us were brought, brought to crypto for this idea of having some separate systems outside the other ones um, until we had a change of heart or poked at the, that, that, those issues a little bit more. So I view it this way. Um, I don't feel like I'm being protected. I'm sure human avatars, he stated, uh, I'm sure we all feel, don't feel like we're being protected, but the, the government, the CFTC, the SEC are responsible for gigantic capital markets. And right now we're just a trickle. The, the crypto space is just a tiny speck. It's just a drop. And um, being able to make sure that the, those larger markets are not disrupted um, wouldn't that fall into, so I'm sort of playing devil's advocate too, just because it makes for a more interesting discussion, but isn't that their <laughs> responsibility? Isn't that their responsibility to make sure that these larger markets, uh, are not disrupted? Well, well, also, their responsibility, but they have no constitutional authorization to even exist. Well, there's lots of True. things in the constitution that they don't follow or people don't follow. So, I mean, aren't we supposed to be able to settle all our debts in gold and silver? They're not, they're not following the normal course of reasoning when it comes to their so-called protection. They basically said, here are our rules and the rules don't have any context to the, to this, um, this space. No, their rule is, you know, here's our rules. One, two, three, four. Okay. On the Howie test. And I don't think orange don't, grows, you know, those don't meet. You know, they might they, meet part of what Ripple is in one context, in one little piece of it, but they don't meet what XRP is. The two are not, the, are, are different, you know, and so they're, they're lumping XRP as Ripple into one bag and they're, they're suppressing that with the threat of going after all these other coins and sending all the letters out, you know, to comply, comply, comply. And then they're not allowing you to comply because it, there's no, there's no structure to be followed. This is my issue with the, with our government. So. Uh, well, I don't think it, you know, trying to, trying to control it, you know, I, I don't think anyone here believes that there's a connection between the orange groves, right, in the Howey test and digital assets or fractionalization or assets or blockchain or tokens or digital assets, right? I mean, none of us believe that the, <clears throat> the implied law has anything to do with, with, <clears throat> with anything remotely about reality in which we're talking about when it comes to digital assets or blockchain, right? But, yeah. but isn't the XRP case different? I mean, in, in, isn't it? depends. It? Different it depends. If you, if you separate into two cases, yes. But if you keep it uh, the same case, then if you keep it as a single case, then um, no. I mean, that yeah, was really about Larson and Garlinghouse, right? Using that tranche as the personal piggy bank and enough evidence there to show that they were doing funny things with the price. How does XRP make money? XRP makes money by selling tokens. No, XRP not by the usage does not between banks. make money. XRP doesn't make any money. Okay, XRP is not an entity. Ripple. Ripple. Ripple is. XRP is like a rock. And we're trading rocks like gold. XRP is a commodity. XRP is separate and, a, and apart from Ripple. I confirm that XRP will make you no money. I confirm <laughs> <laughs> That's the true, truest statement has been said so far in the show. <laughs> of course, because you said it. <laughs> are, you, are you the fucking ghost? He's the truth ghost. Today. He's the poking bear ghost. He's the poking bear ghost. Yes, he is. <laughs> I, I'm going to act like the peanut gallery today. I'm just going to pepper. That's okay. <laughs> just, just kick him, toss him. Listen, can I? 
can I say something about my American cousins who I love? Yep. Um, we love you too. And, and this is something that's true of every country. It's not unique to Americans. Americans see the failings of their own system because they're looking at through the eyes of all the privileges of being an American. And that's part of being American is putting your system to the test. I, I applaud you for that. I can tell you as a non-American, the rest of the world sees you as the standard. Regardless of your issues that you have, and you have many of them, and I'm not a fan of government. God knows, you all know that. But <laughs> when, you, when you live outside of your country, I can tell you that you have the deepest capital markets in the world. You have markets that largely work. They're liquid. They're regulated. There's rule of law. There's property rights. Um, where am I going to go? Am I going to go to the Russian uh, stock market or the Turkey stock market or the friggin' Chinese stock? Like, where am I going to go? The euro? The euro is a disaster. Euro's uh, turned into a, into a bloated, uh, you know, just a, a bloated centralized state that, that can't, that has a thousand regulations on what kind of cheese you can eat. Trust me, I've got family in the euro, in the European area. Try go living there. Try go living in Australia. And so it's all a matter of perspective. Uh, you should put your system to the test. I encourage you to do that. I'm not saying, I'm not like, oh, don't ever question it. No, no, you should be questioning 100%. But let's keep it real, okay? You're the greatest market in the world. Every market wants to be there, including crypto. And yes, if you've got regulators that are 150 years old, that have no idea what crypto is. They're totally incompetent, right? They're, it's taken them a while, you know, to, to, to get on the train because they simply don't understand what they're looking at and they're afraid uh, and they have interests and agendas. So once you get past that shit though, yeah, we'll go set up somewhere. An exchange will go set up somewhere or whatever, uh, you know, a platform or they all want to be domiciled in the United States. Why is that? Why do they all want to be domiciled in the United States? You know, the most avant-garde, the most creative stuff going on in crypto. Why do they all want to work out of the U.S.? That's because that's where there's more money here. You got it. And that's where all the talent is. Folks, all the, you're, all the talent comes to you like a magnet. Believe me, I see it because I'm outside of your country, okay? Well, so, reach in there and smack the SEC upside the head and tell them to get out the way. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll have to, they'll be, they'll be brought along kicking and screaming. They're not going to be able to stop what's coming. They're going to have to get on board. This is a tsunami that's coming. So, but the creativity is coming from within your own country. Make no mistake. There's stuff going on in your own country that some of you are aware of and some of you aren't. Very deep, deep uh, technology is happening in your country. It's linked to crypto. Okay. I don't, I don't want to swing to the woo side just yet, but there is, that's where it's coming from. You're the center of the universe when it comes to economic markets. That ain't gonna change in my lifetime, okay? All these, stupid, all these stupid videos where the dollar is burning and the country's burning and it, you know, like all these crazy fear mongering videos, you're gonna have some problems, don't get me wrong. Your dollar's gonna have some problems, but it's gonna outlast my, me in my life, trust me. Well, we're all under the thumb. We're just all under a different thumb. Yeah, but those thumbs are different sizes, right? If I'm if I'm living in Turkey, sure I'm, I'm waking up to a devaluation, enough. right, of a twenty percent today. I don't want that. Mine and there. yours is big enough to keep us from being mm -hmm. able to, under normal circumstances, to uh, participate in a large swath of the market. And everybody that's outside the United States it does not have that same thumb on them. They've got a different thumb on them. They might, you know, like Australia's got one thumb on them now. Europe's got another thumb on them right now. Yeah, but we're living off of your creativity. We're able to do that. Ironically, we have found a little way to get around that. That's really happening on the backs of, of American creativity. Listen, in today's market, in this swoon that we had today, in all this carnage that we saw today, what worked? A few gaming and metaverse coins, which we're going to get into, yes, but that's a that's a pinprick uh, in the in the giant markets. You know what really worked? What were they? The U.S. dollar and U.S. Treasuries. What does that tell you? Where does money go? What happens when the world gets fearful? So, 
you know, that's, that's all you need to, that's all you need to say. That's all you need to look at. That to me is the mic drop right there. Wouldn't you say that's because of the printing of the U S dollar? Why is your dollar going up? If it's the printing. Because everybody else's dollar is going down. They're all against each other. Bingo. Bingo. You know? bit, because so, yeah, we're going to be the last man yeah. standing, you know, yeah. in the USA as far as the dollar is concerned. Yeah, scared money is flowing into the US. I and I take a look at this. People ask me that question all the time. Um, because I mean, I get paid in US dollars and I live in another country. And what I've been doing is I've been stocking up on my US dollars like a little squirrel because my country's dollar was actually doing pretty freaking good against the US dollar. But I was like, that's not going to last much longer. And so I finally dipped my toe in when we fell below 80 cents. And I had to convert some because I'm getting ready to skedaddle and I got to leave a bunch of money behind to run the studio and stuff, right? There's paychecks and expenses and stuff. So um, I did that, but I was holding back until more into December because I did always feel like from the beginning that in the end, like the end, when, it, when we're going into the everything all at once, because a few months ago, I think in September, I said we had entered the rapids. <laughs> we're now into the rapids. Yep. So, and I mean, I don't necessarily know what that means. I guess this is it. Um, and it definitely has been, you know, the wide swings have continued in the crypto market. I knew we, I knew we'd get over 3 trillion and I was really trying to hold people back from pile driving anything in once we got over 3 trillion. Cause I felt like we would have a pullback once we got past that, but oh my gosh. Um, yeah, money is going to continue to flow into the U S dollar because, you know, people are afraid and scared money goes into the United States and, and it's also going to start flowing more so into cryptocurrencies because you can see that cryptocurrencies are becoming sort of less and less affected by what goes on with the worldwide stock markets. So let's, let's bring this back to blockchain because I, listen, I get it. It's annoying. It's frustrating. Uh, I think we get there. I think the, what we need to do is support, you know, blockchain and crypto friendly candidates. I think we need to lobby like every other stupid industry does in the United States, right? Um, but what, once again, I'm going to take the devil's ad. What am I being prevented from doing? Like, what am I being prevented from doing? I, it's lawfully, annoying. Lawfully or ability-wise? You, I, I Frame it however you would like, but what am I being prevented from doing? Losing money in a, in a, new, in a new market. That's so what they say. They want to they want to prevent you from, at least you to do. Well, they prevent, I'm prevented from uh, signing up to Binance. I'm prevented from signing up to multiple, you know, jurisdictional uh, exchanges, which have coins on them that would be much easier to purchase should we be not limited to do that. And, and, and we're not limited to do that. Because the government of the USA has reached out and slapped these other guys back away, you know, get out of the United States. Don't met, don't 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 give that your service. Don't allow these people in the U.S. to to uh, do any business with you. Well, let's take let's take, let's take that a little bit further there, Tarzan. So, as a as a customer of Kraken of Kraken in the U.S. We currently have going on the very hot po uh, polka dot parachain auctions. As a customer of Kraken, you are not allowed because of US regulations to participate from Kraken in those auctions, whereas somebody in Mexico is from the very same exchange. Hell, I didn't even know that. I, I can use I can <laughs> use I can use the polka dot JS wallet and participate that way. That could be from anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world. Hmm? Right? But from but from a centralized exchange, I am not allowed to do that because mm -hmm. of US regulation. 
And you've got that same issue also on gate.io with buying certain coins. Like they just, mm -hmm. you know, you can't buy reef on gate.io anymore either because they've said U.S. You know, residents can't buy. And I think there are a handful of other ones. I have to go back and look. You know, the exchanges are kind of saying that these coins, you know, if you're a U.S. resident, you, you can't buy them for, you know, regulatory reasons or whatever they fear that the U.S. government has an issue with. But if you had a corporate entity outside the United States, that corporate entity, you could be a United States system, a citizen, and have that that corporate entity buy tokens all day long. Yeah. There are ways there are around. There ways around everything under yes. any circumstances. Yet, if all of those things exist, they must exist for another class of individual instead of the normal buyer. So, again – we're being individuals are being restricted in in a in a free society to where you're being I, I'm sovereign right to spend my money you know or my income the way I would like to then if I'm if I'm really I'm not harming another individual person you know or or doing something that's nefarious you know like the stuff with kids on the line and stuff like that. I shouldn't be restricted, you know? So this, uh, this is the. So what's the, the solution thing. class action lawsuit against uh, people wanting in the United States to participate in uh, blockchain or crypto markets. If you feel like they're being harmed by the United States government. Is that what we're talking about? Like, what do you, what do you. What? I'm not too sure that will even get us where we need to get. I, I think it's it, because we've already. There's already, um, you know, there's 60,000 some odd people that have already signed up with an attorney, you know, that are XRP owners that did no business with Ripple whatsoever, none, never bought a, a coin from Ripple. So we have no, uh, you know, no legal claim to them. And yet the SEC is trying to glob all these people together. And, and, and all the actions of everyone saying that anything that was ever sold in XRP was, you know, considered to be a registered security. And then somehow we have, we, we actually have zero rights to anything that's in Ripple, but yet the SEC is trying to, trying to tell us we do, but we don't. There's why no do, contract. Why do, why do all crypto platforms, crypto projects, the really good ones, like the real ones, why do they all seek SEC approval? Why is that the golden, the golden, you know, cup, the victory cup for them to get that? And believe me, it is. That's what they're aiming for, every one of them. Uh, explain to me why that is. I, I'm it's the, it's the less of the beating. I don't think I don't think they're trying to, Santino. I don't know uh, companies that are up there registering with the SEC to get to get told that they can't do anything. Most of the companies once, that have tried to do business with them have been slapped down and told them not to. The ones Just I like can Coinbase. assure you, no, that's not true. The ones that really want to achieve something, the big ones, the ones that really want to change things, uh, the, the, the ones that are really a going concern. I'm so not talking, about, I'm not talking the about the micro caps, the small little micro caps that are working on the fringes. What, they are what all major seeking. currency is registered with the SEC in doing business? So Polymath is, is registered as a security. They, they were the first one to what? receive that designation. 2,000 some odd tokens, one? Well, they, they deemed it important enough to go through the process. Well, they- Some have not they, went through the process. Then we have other companies, we have other entities like Coinbase saying, we're trying to get an audience with the SEC that won't give us the time of day. Right, and, and, and most of them can't get, a, can't get a process. No one at the SEC will tell them what they actually have to do. They've got no true regulation. I'm, There's I'm not suggesting written. they're playing by the, I'm not suggesting they're being fair. And I'm not suggesting they, they even know what they're doing at this stage. I'm just making the wider point that that is the system in place for better or for worse. The SEC has to get better. Nobody, nobody's Everybody saying that they can't, that they shouldn't, but that ain't gonna change. The whole is that they're gonna get better. They want the blue uh, check the mark, case, but there the is no the, path to the blue check mark. In the case of the SAC, they just need to be told to back off. Everything crypto is out of their purview. They are working off of a off of a process which is over 100 years old. That is 
useless in this environment. Even if it was modernized, it's still useless in this environment. Your government SEC, won't allow your government won't allow crypto to get into the water supply unless it's there's some form of regulation on it coming. It's already in the water supply, Santino. Yeah, but not not in a big way. Not access to the giant capital that's there. They they're they have to pave the way. I'm with you. They're eventually not going to have a choice. But if it's not the SEC, it's got to come from somewhere else. And It'll come from Congress. And there's two bills in I mean, Congress right I, now. I, I, I can walk into any casino and bet my ass off without any repercussion anywhere. If it's a le- licensed and regulated casino, you can. If it's, if it's Crypto Spartan's backyard casino, you can't probably. Right, I can go down. The, I can go down. Go down the, the go down the the old ladies' uh, bingo <laughs> game. You dropping big money down at the bingo game? Are you? Good, you could. Yeah, you know, couple of hundred. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with my backyard casino. That's exactly. all I got. <laughs>